Hey everybody, welcome to another video on Tragedy of the Commons. Uh, this part one video will just be some graphing. I'm not actually going to do any math. In the part two video, I'll go nuts with the math for you to help you out if that's what you want. So, what's Tragedy of the Commons? We're dealing with common resources. And a common resource is a good that is not excludable, meaning it's hard to stop anyone from using it. But it is rivalrous, meaning that one person using it might reduce the value to another person. A couple of common examples are fishery. It's like a chunk of the ocean where you get to pull a bunch of fish out of the water. If one person gets too many fish, there's not as many for the rest. Another example is a forest, and there are other examples too. So let's look at this graph here. We're going to use the fishery example. I've got a quantity of boats. And for a while, as I increase my number of boats, it has no effect on marginal revenue. Uh, that black portion of the curve could be called constant returns to scale, because as I increase inputs, output increases at the same rate. But when I switch to the red part of the line, there's decreasing returns to scale, because as my number of boats increases, additional boats start grabbing less and less fish out of the water, generating less and less revenue. Now, this has an interesting effect, which is that it creates an average revenue curve that looks like this. Now, we don't usually deal with average revenue curves, at least not in most of my micro classes. We'll deal with marginal revenue, we'll deal with total revenue, but average revenue is going to be important because if I am one of these many boats, uh, I'm interested in how much money does your average boat make. When I show up and start fishing on the same chunk of water that all of you are fishing in, I'm just interested in how much does each person make. That's what I will base my personal decision off of. So when I introduce a marginal cost, a cost of going fishing today for a, for a specific boat, then I'll make a decision weighing costs and benefits uh, average revenue is what I expect to bring in, and the marginal cost is what it costs me, and I will probably see an increase in boats up until this market quantity, where the marginal cost of a boat equals the average revenue per boat. Uh, the boats will have zero economic profit, but that's what our market should do. Something that you'll notice if you've taken other micro classes is we're usually more interested in the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Uh, an outcome that is better for this industry is here. If we choose the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, if we choose the number of boats that maximizes the well-being of this industry, then we get this optimal quantity here. Now you'll notice that the optimal quantity is less than the market quantity, and this is the tragedy of the commons in a nutshell. Too many of us use the good, or use the common resource, and the outcome we get is actually less beneficial for our industry than if less of us actually went fishing. And so what do we do about it? Uh, we can issue a certain number of permits to go fishing, maybe equal to Q optimal, or we could put a tax on boats. Uh, what would that look like? I would want to find the average revenue at the optimal quantity, and I would want to set a tax equal to the gap between average revenue and the marginal cost. That gap will have the effect of making the individual boats take the marginal revenue into account. If I set a tax equal to that gap, or a fee per boat, uh, that should lead us to this optimal quantity. Now, before I finish, because this is a short video, let me remind you of one other thing that is sometimes a problem with our tragedy of the commons. With fisheries and forests and whatever, it's not just that our market is not creating the best well-being for the industry, the thing is that some of these resources can run out. And if we over-harvest them, uh, 
that can be especially damaging to the industry in the long run as we might run out of fish or run out of forest. And so something else we might be interested in later on is if there is some sort of replenishment rate. So, you know, how fast do the fish have more little fishies? If the replenishment rate is less than the market quantity, then we're gonna run out of fish. Why? Because we will start harvesting fish faster than the fish have babies and we will eventually run out. Uh, but that is all stuff for another day. I've got other videos on what you do when resources uh, get depleted and how to allocate it over time periods. It's just something else I wanted to add in as like an extra thought. So I don't know if that's helpful to you. It was short, but maybe it's useful. Uh, if not, too bad. Come talk to me in my office or something. Good luck, guys. See you later.